Let us proceed in identifying the interactions between objects or classes. These interactions can be presented as relationships in a diagram. Yes, we will talk about the relationships here in class modeling or the class-based modeling. <laughs> okay, so let's talk first about the dependency. So if we will talk about dependency, um, dependency is used to describe the relationship between various elements in the class diagram that are dependent upon each other. By the word itself, dependent. So basically, it can't or it will not work without the other class. Okay? It exists between two elements if changes to the definition of one element. In this example, the schedule here, the schedule is our independent class okay schedule is our independent class independent okay sorry and the class class here is our um, this is our uh, dependent class okay dependent class okay patawarin niyo po ako sa aking hand writing okay Okay, so okay, then it may cause changes to the other if ever that the independent class will be changed. Um, automatically, the, in, the dependent class, which is the class, will be changed as well. So this association is actually a, uh, represented by a uni- directional line this one okay if you can see a dashed line with an open arrow that points from the class to the schedule this is what we call the unidirectional line okay so basically if you can see something like this this is our dependent class the class it's pointing because the class uses the schedule okay the class for the dependent class it's pointing to the independent class okay for example if there is changes or there will be a change in your class schedule let us say from mondays and fridays it was changed to tuesdays and thursdays so meaning the dependent class which is the class this one will be affected to the changes happen to the schedule, which is our independent class. Okay? So, pack one, pack all. Okay? So, this diagram, by the way, class was created using um, draw.io. Um, there are many other tools that can be used to create class diagrams, but actually, we just use this one. Okay? Proceed. We also have association relationships. So when you say association, it encompasses just about any logical connection or relationship between classes. So this is similar to the relationships in our ER or entity relationship diagram, but referred to differ, uh, but referred to differently. So when you say association, it actually represented by a bi-directional line, this one, okay, which and indicating multiplicity or cardinality so we have this one right it was represented by zero and the asterisk here um, meaning that is actually the many right so i believe that this was discussed in your database object before so i know that this is quite um, easy for you okay multiplicity by the way class um, defines how many of the class are related to another class. Okay, so example, um, the student object here, this one, enrolls in, enrolls in zero to many classes. Okay, so again, student class enrolls in zero to many classes. On the other hand, a class object or a class class is enrolled in by zero to many 
students. Okay? So, I believe that uh, one too many, like this one, the right? Cardinalities. I believe it was discussed in your um, database subject before. So, actually, uh, ganitong classing, <laughs> I can still remember those days na tinatawag po namin tong Adidas or Chicken Finger. <laughs> diba? Hindi, mo, hindi, nyo naman pa kamu, uh, hindi nyo naman po kami masisisi. Diba? Like this one. Okay, let's proceed. We have composition. So, another relationship that can be represented in a class diagram is composition. The UML representation of a composition relationship shows composition as a filled diamond shape on the containing class end of the line that connects contain class. So basically, the course here is our containing class. Okay. Containing class. Okay. Sorry, again. And the class here is our contain class. Oh, sorry. Wrong spelling, wrong. Okay. Contain class. Okay. So if we have an example here. For example, we have um, Comsci 1 to 8 course. So Comsci 1 to 8 is a 1 to 8 is a course. Then it contains classes. So we have class A, class B, and class C. Am I right? So um, Comsci 1 to 8 has um, three classes. Comsci 1 to 8 A, B, and C. So basically, composition depicts real world whole part relationship as um, such as in the case of an eng engine that is part of a car or a kind of dependency wherein one class is destroyed, um, is destroyed, the related class is also destroyed. Okay? So in the example, the class, class, cease to exist if the course is removed from the curriculum. Okay? So again, this is our containing class and this is our contained class. Take note of that one, okay? So if ever that this course will be removed, of course, the containing class that consists of three classes, for example, yung um, Kamsai 1 to 8 po natin, uh, automatically, it will be destroyed or it will be removed, okay? Because we, they are using the relationship, uh, they're using the composition relationship, okay? Let's proceed. We have the aggregation, okay? Aggregation, on the other hand, is a kind of association which is similar to composition such that a whole part or part of relationship is represented. It represented by a hollow diamond shape. Um, in the um, in the composition earlier, it was represented by a filled um, diamond shape, but this one it's hollow. Okay. However, unlike composition, if the containing class, which is the program, okay, I'll just put ing na lang because it's contained ing like that, and the course here is the contained, so I'll just put ed. Sorry. Okay. So, if the containing class is removed, the contained class remains. Again, if the containing class is removed, for example, the program will be removed, the contained class will still remain. In the example, the course remains even if a program to which it belongs to a, um, uh, sorry, um, the course remains even if a program to which it belongs to is removed from the curriculum. It is possible that the course is used in another program as well. For example, I'll just give an example. Uh, we have CONSCI or BSCS. Or BS CONSCI or BSCS. BSCS is our containing class. And we have a course here, for example, Science 10. Science 10, or for example, your um, sock side. Okay. Okay, your sock side. Okay. 
your your science ten subject, also your soft sci four subject, is what we call or are actually what we call our contained class. Okay, contained class can't be removed because the science ten and the uh, and soft sci ten or the soft sci it's actually a class from the other program. So we can say that the science ten actually from the DSES, uh, sorry, DS Bio or DS Biology. The consci, uh, the SOCSI here, um, it's from the other program in political science, for example, like that. Okay? That is aggregation. That's for C. So let's talk about generalization. Uh, this, I believe this is the last relationship in class diagrams. Um, in, uh, in generalization, one element is specialization of another general um, in another general component. It is called a parent-child relationship. It indicates that one of the two related classes or the subclass, we have undergrad and graduate, it's actually subclasses of the student class. So basically the student here is our um, parent and we have children, we have undergrad and also the graduate. Okay? So it indicates that one of the two related classes or the subclasses is considered to be a specialized form of the other, which is the supertype or our class. Okay, or this is our supertype. And the superclass is considered a generalization of the subclass. In practice, this means that any instance of the subtype, okay, any instance of the subtype is also an instance of the superclass. So if there will be changes in the undergrad or in the grad, of course, it will be um, inserted as well in the student. Okay? The UML graphical representation of a generalization is actually a hollow triangle like this one. Okay? Hollow triangle shape. On the, uh, on the super class end of the line or the tree of line that connects it to one or more subtypes or our um, children, okay? This is pretty much the same as the subtype, supertype relationship that I believe that you have learned in the ER diagrams. It is mostly used in representing inheritance, okay? That's proceed. Finally, we will talk about the analysis packages or the package itself. Um, package is not actually a relationship in a class diagram, but this will help us in a way that we can group items and all. Okay. When we say package diagram, package diagram, if the uh, it's actually the purpose of it is for organization. A package diagram is used. A package in UML is used to group um, group related elements together in one package. With all of these packages being identified, it is now easier to visualize a high level structure of the system using interactions between packages. So if we can see uh, here in our figure, we have curriculum package. Okay. Uh, I believe that um, we also have classes like program class, um, course class, and the class class. Okay, Each of them has its own relationship. For example, for program and course, uh, they use aggregation. For course and class, they use a composition. Am I right? Okay. So hopefully you have learned a lot by... Uh, by our discussion about um, the class-based, really uh, the class-based modeling. Thank you.